Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed morning, everyone. I hope we're enjoying the service today. And uh, it's that time for the word. And before we go any further, I want God to be the one to give it to us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for a blessed service, all the wonderful worship and testimonies of your goodness and everything else that you're doing in this service, Lord. We, and we're here for your word. We ask you to prepare our hearts and minds to receive this word today. I ask you to speak through me and let me not lean on my own understanding, but just give me an open heart so that you touch us all and we get to know you and what you, the plans you have for us moving forward. So we give this sermon to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. <clears throat> All right, so definitely uh, there, there's very much purpose in this, uh, in this series that we, of teachings that God has been giving us uh, each time. As you may remember, uh, over the last few weeks that God has had me sharing the word, we talked about being chosen for such a time as this. God also revealed to us that who we are in him and why we're here for such a time as this and how it is written about us in the word. Praise the Lord. What a blessing that is. Now, today, we're going to talk about something else that's very specific to the time we're in and what he wants us to be prepared for. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17 says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> All right. We're going to talk more about this and see how we can reconcile this with the other things that God has been showing us. And so just uh, make yourself comfortable and Enjoy the word today. It's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be separate, says the Lord. And so the title of this sermon is called Set Apart, but in the mix. How do we reconcile that? God has set us apart, but we're still in the world. And we're also called to bring the good news to the world. But we ourselves are set apart. So I believe God's going to help us understand the difference or how it all works together. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. As I already mentioned, we are no longer of this world. John chapter 17, verses 6 through 11 is part of a pretty, uh, you know, this prayer of Jesus to God in John chapter 17 just moves me every time I read it. And this is a section where I believe he's talking about people such as ourselves. And so he says, I have manifested your name to men and women whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. He's praying to the Father. And they have kept your word. Now they have known all things, that all things which you have given me are from you. Because Jesus constantly reminded us that all things come from the Father. And, and that we are, uh, everything he's talking about, he doesn't speak on his own accord. For I have given them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Praise the Lord. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you've given me, for they are yours. We are his. Amen? Amen. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. As we heard testimony today of things that God has used us for, for God to be glorified. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now I am no longer in the world. This was Jesus again speaking. But these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you've given me. 
that they may be one as we are. Amen? Amen. So he's praying to the Father saying, all right, they're no longer of the world. They're with us in the heavenly places. We now have spiritual communion with God, with Jesus, with the, the Holy Trinity. We have all of that while we're still on this earth in these fleshly bodies. Amen? Amen. When God does want us to be different than the world. He wants the world to see him through us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So he tells us, do not love the world. First John chapter 2, verses 15 and through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. And this is not about the earth and the trees and the mountains. Those are things that God created, but the ways of the world. The, the system of this world, which is totally the opposite of love. It's the opposite of God, which is love. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Praise the Lord. So there's our first exhortation from God is not to be the way of the world, not to function in that way anymore. And praise God that he's doing that in us. It's not like we have to try real hard, but we just come in agreement with his word. Amen. And he does the rest. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. All right. We are called to be holy. What does holy mean? It means separate, uh, clean and a way I, I should have brought a definition, but there's already so much information we have today. But first Peter chapter one, verses 13, 13 through 16 says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is what I keep talking about. The revelation of Jesus Christ, like Job had, like other people had, like the disciples had uh, when they finally got to really see him for who he is. Praise the Lord. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, it, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen? Amen. Again, we're here to represent him. And so anything we do and people watch us and they're looking and of course, we can't do it on our own. I don't want everybody to try to be good on the outside. We're going to talk more about that. But to just continue to surrender to what God, as we heard in our testimonies, what's going on in our hearts, what does God want to do in us? And if we're open and just letting him do that work, he is making us holy. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. All right. Now, let's go to the Old Testament for a little bit and see how God gave us a picture of whole, being holy and set apart in the Bible. In Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When either a man or a woman, hey, woman, even in the Old Testament, how about that? When an, either a man or woman consecrates an offering to take the vow of a Nazarite to separate himself to the Lord, holy and set apart, right? Amen. So then they talk about Nazarite. He shall separate himself from wine and similar drink. He shall drink neither vinegar made from wine nor vinegar made from similar drink. Neither shall he drink any grape juice nor eat fresh grapes or raisins. Please do not stop doing all these things. This is the Old Testament. These are physical things. It's not what he wants for us in the spirit. Amen. 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 All the days of his separation, he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine from seed to skin. All the days of the vow of his separation, no razor shall come upon his head. Until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to the Lord, he shall be holy. Then he shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separates himself to the Lord, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or his sister when they die, because his separation to God is on his head. All the days of his separation, shall he shall be holy to the Lord. Amen. Okay. Amen. Again, and then, you know, that's what they had in the Old Testament. Everything was physical. It was in your 
It was in the environment that you can touch, feel, and smell, but these are spiritual messages for us. Amen? Yeah. He was giving us an indication of the days that were to come when he would make and separate himself a special people to be holy from the world. Amen? Amen. We see an example of this in Judges chapter 13, verse 2 through 5. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Amen? Amen. Who was that? That was Samson. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, again, it was physical. Even though God was doing spiritual things there, it really wasn't his hair that gave him all that strength. It was the Holy Spirit not his hair, but it was all symbolic, amen? But he was separated from birth. We, too, are called to be separated from being born again from that moment forward, amen? Amen. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Well, it's God's way. I shouldn't say unfortunately, but it just doesn't happen overnight. God has to begin a work and gradually take all the things that are unholy out of us to make us holy. Amen? Amen. And he's done a pretty good job, hasn't he? Praise Amen. the Lord. All right. Now we get to the New Testament and see if there's still encouragement to be holy and set apart. Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 19. Therefore, do not let sin in, reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments to, of righteousness to God, his hands and feet. Amen? Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Now, if we're trying to be good, we're trying to accomplish the law, and that's why we struggle in sin. Amen? Amen. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under, the, under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Praise, mm -hmm. the, Lord. Praise the Lord. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which, which you were delivered. Praise the Lord. We were slaves to sin before God redeemed us. We had no way to be good on our own. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and law uh, of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of of righteousness for holiness. Amen? Amen. Amen? This is the New Testament. Don't let anybody deceive you. This is what God's called us to be, holy and set apart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, it is, because he redeemed us the least we could do is offer ourselves up and let him use us to have others be blessed. Otherwise, we'd be like the thief on the cross and enter paradise and it's over. But who? Who will he send? Who will be there for others to hear the good news and see him through us? Amen? Amen. It's reasonable. We deserve much worse. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We got to be transformed. We got to be holy. We got to be set apart. So now let's have some fun with some pictures. Uh, what comes to mind when we hear be separate or be holy? The first thing 
that I know would come to my mind when I was still in the world and I hear all this, I think about people like this that are just totally separated from the world and they spend all their time in the word and prayer and maybe singing and uh, they're very dedicated. They've given their lives over and then they, they move to some place like this. They took them be, be on the rock of Christ seriously, right? They go out there in the middle of nowhere and they spend all their time there. Uh, they call these what, monasteries and, uh, and separate themselves from the world. Because if we think in the natural, that would be the solution, right? Okay, we're now yours, God. We, we give up everything when, and we go. But that's not what God's called us to do. That's what we think of when we first think of that. But the problem with that, and we're going to see some of the problems with that. First of all, I don't even have written down, but remember that God revealed to us that you don't eat an animal that uh, doesn't have a cloven foot. A cloven foot has two, two toes, and when the feet represent our walk. And if you only have one, it means you're only serving God or you're only serving people. But if you have a cloven, you're, you're serving God and you're, and you're blessing people. Love God and love people like the commandments show us. Amen? Amen? And so when we separate ourselves like that, who is bringing the gospel forward? Who is the one ministering to people? Maybe there are some ministering going on, but God wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen? Amen. Amen in the workplace, in school, wherever we happen to be. The problem with being totally religious and uh, self-righteous looks like this. Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 and through 28. Jesus says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Those are the religious leaders of the day. They're all in their temple and they wore their clothes and they were very separated from mankind, yeah. from the rest of the people. They, they were just untouchable. Mm -hmm. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay a tithe of mint and anise and cumin. In other words, your tithes and offerings, you do all that religious stuff and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. That comes from being in the world and, and demonstrating these things to the people around us. Amen? Mm -hmm. These you ought to have done without leaving these others, the others undone. In other words, that means tithing and being in church and do these things are a part of our life. Amen? Amen. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Think about that. A gnat's a tiny little fly. And swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. All this looking very religious and very separated, but there's nothing going on inside. Blind Pharisee first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, our hearts, that the outside of them may be clean also. When God works in our hearts, naturally, we start changing on the outside because he's changing us on the inside. Amen? Amen. It don't matter about tattoos or hairstyles or how the clothes we wear. What's going on underneath? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed, uh, indeed appear beautiful outwardly. They were all wearing the right things and clean and everything else. But inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. There's nothing happening inside. Even you so outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Amen? Amen. Which gives the world reason to blaspheme the church and blaspheme God because there's nothing going on inside. So even though they're all religious, and I'm not talking about everybody, there's good, solid, God-loving Christians all over the place in different churches. But the overall thing of this, this religious thing is it, it just looks good on the outside, but there's, there's the relationship, the transformation isn't happening. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. So how do we reconcile all of this with what Jesus shows us? How can we be holy and separate and yet look at Jesus? In Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 through 12, now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house. Behold, many taxes, this is Matthew's house. Amen? Or, Amen. Well, 
It could have been his house. We don't know. But it's about Matthew, right? He had already, he just called Matthew. It says, he sat at the table in the house that behold many tax collectors and sinners. In other words, prostitutes and other people that were rejected from society, drug addicts and alcoholics and all those. They came and sat down with him and his disciples, the Pharisees. There's no way, there's no way they were going to be around those kind of people. And he's got all these people that are rejected from the world. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? This is crazy. When Jesus heard that, he said to those who are well, have no, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And the truth is everybody is sick. The whole heart is sick. There is no one who seeks after God, but they didn't believe it because they saw themselves as righteous. Amen. Amen. But those who understand that they needed help, they needed a savior. Those are the ones he responds to. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So I, I couldn't get a better picture, but this is what I had in my mind when I was reading that verse. This is from Jesus of Nazareth. I just clipped it right from the video online and YouTube. And you see that Jesus, unlike the Pharisees with all their fancy outfits sitting in the temple, he is right there in the mix with the prostitutes, the tax collectors and everything else. Holy and set apart, but right yes. in the middle of the mess. Amen? Yes. Amen. He was not unclean. He was clean, and he brought God's light yes. into that dark place. Amen? Yes. Amen. And brought yes. them to tears, and they believed, and they were saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Luke 7, chapter 30, uh, Luke 7, verses 30 through 39. But the Pharisees and lawyers that rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. This is what we're talking about. They didn't feel that they had any issues, mm -hmm. so why would they go get baptized? They didn't understand. They didn't understand that Jesus said, if you are even angry with another person, that you committed murder in your heart. And if you've even lusted after another person, you committed adultery in your heart. Amen? Amen. So now he's, he's at one of the Pharisees' houses, actually. And the Lord said, to what shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourned for you and you did not weep. In other words, we're doing all this religious exercise and we're not getting anything out of it. We're doing all these things, but what is what God really wants? Amen? Amen. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. He was out there in the wilderness eating locusts and honey and did, you know, a camel's skin or whatever. It was his clothes, and they, oh, this guy's a lunatic. And you, they, they say he had a demon in him, but God sent him. He was paving the way for Jesus. The son of man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In other words, they judged him because he was in the midst of all these unclean people. Amen? Amen. And so they, they're thinking that he can't be a holy man. But wisdom is justified by all her children. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. Well, here we go, right here. And, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. Now, you can guess maybe prostitute, but she was a sinner. Okay. And when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, can you imagine this, right? These self-righteous people, everything was perfect. They have servants and everything else. She comes into the house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping as she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisees who invited him saw this, he spoke to himself. This is a righteous, self-righteous person. This man, if he were a prophet, if he were holy, would know what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for he, she is a sinner. In other words, in their mind, they cannot mix together. Amen? Mm -hmm. But Jesus was right there. Look at the Pharisees are watching him. They can't believe this. And here she is at his feet, and she's washing his feet with her tears and everything else. Pick it up in verse 44. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? He says, this Simon is a Pharisee. 
I entered your house. You gave, I think it's a Pharisee. He said, Simon, unless Peter was there too. I don't know. I entered your house. No, it has to be the guy. Simon's yeah. in the, it's his house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman is anointing my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Amen? Amen. The truth is, we all need a whole lot of forgiving. But if we are, we even, someone shared this in the testimony, if we're not open to letting God show us the unforgiveness and the and the hatred and all the things in our heart, if that, if we're not forgiven of those things, we're not going to love him. Amen? Amen? But when we, we come to the light and he shows us and we surrender that he heals us and he sets us free and we're free indeed amen? amen then he said to her your sins are forgiven amen amen praise the lord amen. mark chapter 1 verses 40 through 41 now a leper came to him imploring him kneeling down to him and saying to him if you are willing you can make me clean what does the old testament say they can't even come in town you can't get anywhere near a leper their skin is falling off and it's contagious and they cast them out of the city and there's no way a holy man could ever go near a leper amen, amen. but jesus moved with compassion the heart stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed, amen? amen? And he touched him and he was healed that very moment. Praise amen. the Lord, amen? Amen. amen? amen. We are called to be a light in this dark world, amen? amen? Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, Jesus says to us, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and give light to all who are in the house. A monastery, there ain't nobody going to see the light over there. Amen? That's right. Amen. Amen. It's in the mix is where they're going to see the light of God. Amen. Let your light so shine before men, right in front of them, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. We had a testimony today of what someone did for someone, and his father, our father in heaven, is glorified. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has prepared us to be a lamp. He's getting rid of all the things that are filtering out the light and preparing us to be a light in the days ahead. Amen? Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15, do all things without complaining and disputing, because obviously that's not going to shine God's light, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation mm -hmm. among whom you shine as light in the world. Amen? Okay. This is what God has called us for, to be a light in the darkness. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right. And so I feel extremely, extremely sure that God is telling us this for a reason. Amen? Amen. This message has been with me all week. It's been very clear. And, and I, I just know this is for us. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. How many testimonies have we heard? We can sense something is happening. We're starting to get re-communicate with people that we haven't spoken to in a long time. There's where we've been isolated and God is isolated, not ourselves for a long time. But now all of a sudden we can see there's their relationship building and everything else, but with people who are not where God has us. Okay. But this, this season is here. Before I go any further though, I want us to take a pause. And I want us to, re as we think about, we're going into this season, we need to remember what vices, what habits has God removed from our lives? What things we once were slaves to and we're not anymore. The reason why is because those habits and those vices still exist in the world. Mm -hmm. And God is going to place us in the world again. Mm -hmm. 
And we have to remember that God set us free of those things, but these people are still stuck in them. Amen? Yeah. Now, here is the kind of thing we may encounter these are uh, the same vices that we once struggled with. We need to rest assured that God has set us free. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that we're not there to go and partake in it again or anything else, but we may actually encounter it because God lets our experiences cause us to minister to others. Amen? Mm -hmm. If we used to drink, we may end up meeting with people who have drinking problems. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case, right? Well, you know what? The fact is, here's the hard truth, all right? We may even encounter things that we've never experienced ourselves. And I can tell you this from experience. We may experience things that we would never even have gotten involved in when we were in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's not for us to judge, but to be the light so that God can set them free. Amen? Amen. I'm going to give you an example, and this is why I know this is the word for us today. is because this is one of the things that God brought to my attention. Many of you have probably heard of um, Sid Roth, and he has this show. It's supernatural. This woman here is a, is a servant of God, and she does whatever God tells her to do. And, and she, she prays for people. She goes wherever the Holy Spirit says, go here, go there. Well, God tells this woman who has been walking with the Lord for years, I want you to go to Las Vegas, and I want you to attend an adult video convention oh, wow. with pornography and all that kind of stuff and she did not want to go but she chose to follow the lord she didn't have problems with that before but now she's going in this place full of darkness amen uh -huh. and she's going in there because she sold she sold out to do god's will no matter what she knows god has a plan for somebody in that place and so she goes in there against her own will just like Jesus in the garden, amen? And this woman encounters the most bizarre stuff that she's ever seen in her life. But God loves these people and he wants to see them set free. This is her ministering to someone in there. But the reason why not only was she there to be a light for just everybody that she met, but God had a very specific purpose. Now imagine she's in there, she's seen things she doesn't want to see, amen? But she's doing it out of obedience to God, because that's the only way the light's going to come in there, is God, somebody must be willing to go. Amen? Yeah, amen? But the bottom line is that this one, that woman that she went, God said, that's the one I want you to talk to right there. And she started talking to this young lady. And this young lady is the daughter of a pastor. Oh. And this young lady, the, the, the woman came to her and said, God is... Just this is not his plan for you. This is not the direction he has for you. He loves you and he has wonderful plans for you. The woman started breaking down and she, she said, More of all, my father's a pastor. Yo, you're a pastor's kid. I understand and all that. And before it was over, that lady was set free from darkness and went back and, and now serves the Lord or whatever the case, right? But you see, that woman was in a very dark place, and the light had to come to her. It wasn't going to be her coming out. Mm -hmm. And so this woman was used to go into a very dark place. And the reason why I believe we're seeing this is because God is going to cause us to be in the mix with the people as he's starting to show us in places that we wouldn't normally be. But he wants to see set people, people set free. Amen? Yeah. It may not have to be all that. We may be just visiting friends and they watch movies on the TV that we wouldn't ordinarily watch. But it's for us to just show grace and mercy and love and be the light. Amen. Amen. They may listen to music that we don't listen to, but it's not for us to judge them, but to just let God, because when we're in these situations, guess what? God protects us. Amen. He protects us and he doesn't cause us to stumble. We don't have to fear, oh, I used to drink and I go into a bar, I might drink again. No, if we're following God's will, it won't matter. Amen. Amen. He will keep us focused. He'll keep our light shining bright. Amen. Amen. We may be hearing language that we're not comfortable with anymore because God's gotten rid of that out of our life. We might see the way people are dressed and think, oh, no, this is definitely not me or something like that. Or uh, whatever they're eating and drinking. We, 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 we're going to be in these situations 
And God just wants us to walk in love and peace, not worrying about anything. No, we're not going to fall. We're not going to do any of that if we're following his lead. Amen? Amen. But the enemy will do this because I know I've already experienced this. The enemy will try to tell us that these things are then okay for us to do because we're not feeling conviction, right? When we were doing these things before, we felt conviction. Like God saying, that's not for you anymore. Amen? Amen. But now God brings us into a situation where we see those things and we're not feeling conviction. And the enemy will say, you know what? Look, you're not being convicted anymore. It's okay. Go ahead and do those things. It's a trick of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. We are continue to be called to be holy, separate, a lamp of his light, and not to uh, let that be the one that influences us, but for us to be one to let God influence them. Amen? Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he, he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Amen? Amen. James chapter 1, verse 27, you heard me say this before, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows and all the other people out there in darkness in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So the only way we can do that is to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, go into these situations, and when we come out of those situations, we got to be cleansed. Amen? Amen? Well, we'll get to that. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. In all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that the one who is an opponent may be ashamed, ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. If we start partaking in things like that, then they can point fingers. And so that's not what God wants for us. Amen? So the key, this is what I was talking about. <clears throat> Stay transparent and get prayer. God will bring, God brought that woman into that situation there. And and I believe she saw things she didn't want to see. And there's a lot of spiritual stuff around that we just need a spiritual shower. Amen? Amen. And, of course, we talked about this recently. Jesus said in John 13, 13 through 15, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and teach your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Amen? Amen. And that is a physical ex ex uh, expression of praying for one another. Amen? Because Amen. as we walk in this world, we're supposed to remain unspotted. But as you walk, your feet are going to get dirty mm -hmm. because they only wore sandals in those days. So their feet needed to be cleansed. In other words, spiritually, we walk in darkness as God leads us. And we also need a spiritual cleansing as we get prayer. Amen? Amen. And we, some of us already do this as a regular thing, but this is for all of us. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 and 21, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, which is dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen? Amen. If we are not transparent and we, we pile on all this spiritual darkness, or our spiritual ears get plugged up and we're, we're all locked down and we're not flowing in the spirit anymore, we must get prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen? Amen. All right. So I hope we see that God is really giving us a very specific instruction here because this is the time. Amen? Amen. This is the time of the gathering of the Levites. It's time to establish all the people who are going to be functioning in the church that's going to be extremely fruitful in the future. Amen? Amen. But these people are coming with spiritual baggage. 
They may even be in spiritually dark places. And God is going to send us to them to show his love and his light, not for us to get entangled in what they do, but for them to see and come to him. Amen? Amen. For us to just love and pray. Praise the Lord. And we're going to sum, sum it up here. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen? Amen. He's already done that for us. Who were once, once were not a people, but now are the people of God who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, you're just passing through these places. Abstain from flesh, fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Again, not by your own strength, but being transparent and getting prayer, getting healed, all these things. Beloved, I beg you, oh, I read that. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. Here it is. So we're in where he's sending us into the world, the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Amen. Amen. And this reminds me that the guy, no matter what, this guy named Steve, he just was always just, he, you could not get him angry. <coughs> He, he, he would not be unforgiving. He was so patient and kind and loving all the time. And that is, well, I can glorify God what he's done in that guy that caused me to come in my day of visitation when God called me because I, I, he got my attention by seeing how this guy was so different than the rest of the people, including the religious people full of the law. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was patient. He had all the fruit of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy, worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And finally, a message for us all from the Lord today. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will raise, arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. This is where we're going. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for just reminding us what you've done in us already, what you're still doing, sanctifying us and preparing us to be that lamp. We can see truly this is a new season, and there's a lot of people out there who need you, and you are going to send us amongst them, but not for us to integrate with them, but for us to be wholly separate for them to come to you instead, mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah. So we ask you to help us stay transparent. Help us be always open to the leading of your Holy Spirit, which means we need to be cleansed. Our feet, our spiritual feet need to be washed. Help us not hold anything in that's causing us, keeping us from moving forward and, and being your hands and feet. And bring on those people, Lord. Give us hearts to, to compassion and love for them. And we want to see them set free and join us in this wonderful journey you have for us. Yes, for the days ahead, Lord, because the world has gone dark. We see it through the, all the struggles that are happening and the wars and just the craziness of everyday life. The, the devil is having a field day, but you who are in us is greater than he. And so we want your light to shine. Finish this work in us and help us stay with you, no matter where you send us, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, praise the Lord, and for everyone here, the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, God bless you all, amen, praise the Lord.